Good afternoon, good afternoon and very good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Biography. Uh, today's video is kind of a user requested, which already I thought about that, but it's also a user requested video. Uh, so it's like 50-50. Before, uh, and today's topic uh, is about, but wait a second, before I tell you what video today is all about, let me give you a little bit of perspective so you will get the idea what what I'm going to talk about in, in this whole video. And I try to be short, hopefully. Uh, we all know that photography is not a cheap thing. It's expensive. Especially if you go for high-end cameras or high-end lenses, they are very expensive. Uh, flagship camera bodies like Nikon Z9 or Z8 or Canon R3 or R5 or uh, Sony A1 or A7 R4, A5. So they are not cheap cameras, they are all expensive cameras. So and we, when we go for high-end lenses, same. Especially for the lenses, very expensive. 400 2.8, 500 f4, 600 f4, 800 5.6. They are not cheap lenses. So it means that if we want to enjoy, let's let's take an example, wildlife photography, which requires telephoto lenses, super telephoto lenses, for example, 400 2.8, 500 f4, 600 f4, 800 5.6. We can't afford these like 99% of the people who do photography, amateurs or professionals or entry level or serious enthusiasts, like 99% of the people can't afford these high-end lenses. So how we are going to overcome these, uh, this scenario? Like if I want to enjoy wildlife photography and want to enjoy 600 f4 of 500 f4, 800 5.6 lens, I don't have that much money. I don't have deep pockets. So what shall I do? But uh, I really want to feel, I really want to enjoy and uh, you know the, this photography of wildlife and try to get the best out of myself you know when it comes to taking images of birds or cheetah running around and all that so it means that i'm stuck if i don't have money or if i nobody is sponsoring me or nobody is giving me the loan of the lenses so it means that i i can't do that and it means that i cannot explore wildlife or bird photography, so it means that I'm stuck or I, I, I'm not able to grow myself, but there, there is a way, there is a way. And this is what I'm going to talk about that in this video. When I started photography, I quickly realized that it's very hard for people who don't have money to carry this thing because it's expensive, like I said earlier. That's where I came across to use manual focus lenses. Now today's video is all about manual focus. Yes, today's video is all about manual focus lenses and how to get the best out from the manual focus lenses. And now, especially when it comes to shooting sports, action, wildlife, how you can do uh, uh, these sports, action, wildlife shots using manual focus lenses. This is what I'm going to share with you the idea, the concept or the technique which I learned and uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the result. By the way, uh, in this whole video I'm going to keep the images which I took by using a manual focus like you, you keep seeing these images as slides uh, in the form of slides and all these images were taken using a manual focus lens which I learned. So when I started photography I, within the first year I realized it's very hard uh, I have, in terms of money. Fortunately, I was earning good at that time and I was able to afford uh, autofocus lenses, but the basics ones like 1424, 2470, 70 to 200, that's it. But after that, even 70 to 200 was very expensive for me at that time. But after that, I knew that if I want to grow for like 85, 1.2, or 51.2 or 1.4 or 105 
or 135 prime or you know 300 or 400 or 500 you know all these lenses I just simply can't get that that's where I came across some channels who were uh, the owner of the channel was promoting old uh, especially Nikon old manual focus lenses and that's where I learned the advantage of how to use old manual focus lenses those lenses were very exotic very sharp very cheap first of all very cheap very high build quality especially those old AI or AIS lenses and D-tab lenses from Nikon very 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 good lenses and that solved my problem so I will start buying those lenses from eBay and they were very cheap like in hundred or two hundred dollars you will get a very decent 105 2.5 or 2.8 lens or 135 2.8 lens or even I got 204 very compact you know and all those so I was uh, enjoying that but again these were all manual focus lenses and in the beginning it was very hard for me to nail the focus but I was so much focused on learning the manual focus technique that I literally pushed myself very hard in order to learn how to do that uh, and I if you use the Nikon camera you will see the green dot in the lower left corner into the EVF or OVF especially the OVF uh, the little green dot in the lower left corner with the two arrows so two triangular arrows and there is a circle in between so if you put the autofocus point over a face for if you are taking portrait over the eye and you start rotating the focus ring and if the focus is very sharp enough you will get that green dot so once you get that green dot it means that the focus is locked okay <clears throat> all right so let me show you quickly how to do manual focus and how to get confirmation in the OVF for using the manual focus technique so this is a scene all right and as you can see on the lower left corner there is some blinking going on that triangular and uh, circle uh, so what it, it is is basically this is the viewfinder and in the lower left corner you see this little triangle on the left that shows if this triangle comes it means that the focusing uh, is uh, happening before this targeted area so if I have, so if I rotate this uh, focus dial and my point is over there right at the edge right at the edge and I'm going to rotate the lens focus dial and it's going to show me that's circle it means that now this point is in focus and if I rotate keep rotating further now the focus is behind that point so I have to pull back the focus pulling back now this area is in focus pull back okay, further now the focus is before this point so this is on the spot and this is before this is behind the focus point so the focus area is behind this focus point and right now it's perfectly focused because the dot coming so that once you see the dot it means that you you nail the focus and if you see this left side it means that the focus is front it's front focus so that's fine for portrait landscape product photography that's fine but what if you doing bird photography or wildlife photography bird in flight or how you're going to do that that's the difficult part and it's very hard to nail focus using a manual focus oh I found one uh, guy selling uh, 600 f4 AIS lens and I was 
so much into 600 f for that i have to enjoy this lens i have to experience the depth which creates that 600 f4 lens the way it brings that you know thing near to you and the way it compresses the background and the foreground into a, in a very tiny angle angle of view i just want to experience that oh of course i experienced the 600 f4 efl lens from nikon uh, also the g version i also experienced the uh, 800 af 6.3 pf lens i also enjoyed 800 5.6 e type lens e fl lens very lightweight uh, in compared to the g version 400 2.8 i experienced the g type and e fl version so I, I i used all of them thanks to nikon very least to let me you know use these lenses for over a period of time so i enjoyed all those lenses but they were given to me and <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, so they were given to me and I have to uh, buy my own. So I found the 600 F4 uh, AIS lens uh, over the eBay. And I thought, okay, I have done a lot of manual focus uh, practice for four or five years. Uh, and I thought, okay, let me try. And I took a leap of faith and I bought that lens. It was cheap, but still not that cheap but for me it was cheap because when i checked the price which was like 14 15 times more than the autofocus version i thought it's nothing it's literally nothing like 15000 16000 dollar you are getting the 600 f4 autofocus lens what about if you get the same 600 f4 but manual focus old ais lens around twelve hundred dollars so like eleven times less twelve times less the money so i bought that lens and then i started using it but it was very hard for me to nail the focus especially for the birds that's where i learned that trick called focus trap now what is focus trap the idea behind the focus trap is that imagine you are shooting a bird and you know the bird is there somewhere near there and you have to understand the focal plane the focal plane is parallel as the if you are focusing over here on my shoulder and i'm sitting straight so if you put the focus point over here and focus over here so it means that this shoulder this part of my shoulder will also be in focus because this is the focal plane the focal plane is straight from here to here, from right infinity to left infinity, the f even from the top infinity to bottom infinity, it's straight if I'm shooting like that. So it's parallel to the sensor. So wherever your sensor directed is, the focal plane exactly parallel to it and from infinity to infinity, left to right, top to bottom. This is how it is. So I took this idea and I start and using that green i tried to achieve that green dot by rotating the lens and all that but it was very 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 difficult but i learned that trick called focus trap what focus trap did i start you have to go into maximum burst rate whatever your maximum burst rate of your camera offer three frames per second, five frames per second, seven frames per second, nine frames per second, 10 frames per second, 12 frames per second, 14 frames per second, 20 frames per second, or 30 frames per second. It doesn't matter. Try to achieve maximum number of focus, okay? Uh, number of frames per second. And then move the focus point near to your subject. And imagine if the bird is sitting over a tree okay you start pressing the max like the burst and you rotate the focus ring so what is going to happen the focus will start from the front of the bird to the back and you are shooting it burst so what happened in the moment you're going to press and start focusing the ring the focus plane will move from the front all the way to the back and as you keep shooting the burst one of the frame will come to the focus point where you need it 
let's say in my case I want to focus over here on my shoulder and my focus is right over here and I start shooting burst and I rotate the focus ring at the same time while I keep pressing the shutter release button and shooting 10 frames per second. So the focus ring was first frame was here, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the tenth frame focus was at the back, but five or six frame will land over here and I'll get the focus. So that's the whole idea of focus strap. That's one way to achieve focus strap. Second is is if you have your bird is sitting like for example in this particular image uh, the flaming was landing it was taken from 600 f4 how did i achieve the focus exactly like this uh, if you see the uh, the flamingo was on the they were in the lake going in one direction and i knew that the other flamingo was going to land they will land in the same line because they it's the habit of flamingo that they travel back to back, you know, behind each other in the same lane. So as the, all these flamingos are running in one line, so I already pre-focused on this uh, on this lane of the flamingos and I was waiting for the other flamingo to land in the same line. The moment it came, I just start pressing the shutter release button and I was shooting at 9 frames per second by using Nikon D3S and I achieve one of the frame in focus because I already pre-focused at the this lane of the uh, flamingos was you know traveling in one direction fortunately the landing flamingo was traveling in the opposite direction so it makes it creates a very interesting frame that's another way to achieve focus trap you take one of the reference point near to the bird you try to achieve that green dot into the viewfinder which again it requires practice a lot of practice so i did a lot a lot a lot of practice of doing manual focus thing that's how i did there is another image which you are going to see the bird is sitting on this on the pole and i uh, use the 403.5 ais lens and I achieve and it works fine and I was not shooting in burst it was single frame so I was like focus focus right I saw the green dot so it's just like I'm seeing the bird for a composition but at the same time my eye is also into the green dot to see at, and while my hand is rotating the focus dial that's how I achieve again that's how I do most of the old pro photographers they were not looking at the green spot into the OVF they directly see the subject if it's a focus or not in my case I rely more on the green dot than subject but here is the thing if you learn manual focus it will help you to achieve to get better out from your autofocus system let me explain how if you are keep pressing the AF1 button at the back of your camera, try to achieve the focus, the focus will auto keep changing wherever your focus point is or if you put eye auto focus or if you put 3D tracking or whatever. So it means that the camera is constantly hunting for the focus depending on whatever your focus point is. The good thing about manual focus is once you lock the manual focus, it gonna stay there it's not going to move that's good and the bad at the same time so if the bird moves so it means that you are going to lose but if the animal is sitting right it's not moving it means that once you lock the focus it remains there it's not going to move let's say you have you found a bird behind the bushes and you try to create a very artistic frame but the camera autofocus is not able to lock the eye of the bird because the bushes were in the front that's the problem that's where you overwrite the manual focus uh, the autofocus system by turning the focus ring and try to achieve you know 
the focus on the eye on the face of the bird or, or, or the animal using the focus peaking technique into the new mirrorless cameras. The good thing which I like about the Nikon mirrorless system uh, is you can override the autofocus system any point of time. Even you lock the focus, eye autofocus is working, automatic focus tracking, 3D tracking is working. And still, while you keep pressing the AF1 button, you can still override the autofocus by using the manual focus, by rotating the lens uh, focus frame. In other brands, you can't do that. You have to configure, you have to go into the menu, switch to manual focus, and then you can achieve, you, know, you can do this uh, focus over, uh, try to lock the focus. I'm not, uh, uh, there is no camera in my limited knowledge where you can override the autofocus by turn, just, just by turning the focus ring of the lens. Only in Nikon Z system you can do that, which is really good, which is really handy. Like I'm trying to achieve the focus of the bird which is behind the bush, but it's, the camera is not able to pick because the bushes and the leaves are in the front. That's where I immediately just turn the ring, try to achieve the focus over the face by using the focus picking technique because the moment you turn the ring and uh, the autofocus focus, uh, autofocus override kicks in, the uh, focus picking automatically kicks also. It's automatically enabled. So you start seeing red or blue, whatever the focus picking color you choose. So automatically see this coming into the picture. The moment you just turn the autofocus dial, that that's a good part of Nikon uh, uh, Z system is. So I start rotating the dial and I achieve the focus. And I while I keep pressing the F1 button, so in this way I can, you know, lock the focus over the eye by assisting my autofocus system using the manual focus. That's one of the technique which many pros does. If you're not able to, let's say, if your focus is hunting, your camera focus is hunting and not able to lock the focus, you just simply rotate the focus ring, try to achieve the maximum focus while keep pressing the F1 button. In this way, you are assisting the autofocus system by using a manual focus. So, manual focus is always, always going to help you, no matter what. Keep press, keep practicing, keep practicing because by using practice you can do that. There are, uh, somebody said to me that of course you need autofocus system for the bird photography and I was like, not necessary. You can take a uh, fully focused bird shot by using a manual focus lens. Here is another example. Of course, a bird in flight will be difficult, but again, by using the focus trap and maximum frames per second, you can achieve the result. You can and you will. There is this flamingo shot which is flying and I able to lock that focus by using the focus trap and maximum burst rate. I use the D3S, 9 frames per second. Use the 600 F4 manual focus lens. While I was tracking the bird, I was rotating and burst at the same time. And that's how I lock one frame. It can be done. Again, it's not the ideal thing, but same which I said earlier. Nobody have deep pockets. 99% pe people don't have deep pockets, how they are going to, you know, experience these things? By going manual focus. That's how I did. And I think it works really well in my case. <laughs> Maybe in many of your cases it won't work and you prefer to go for autofocus system, which is completely fine. But again, not everybody got deep pockets or you have to rely on consumer grade lenses like 
100 to 600 from Sigma or Tamron or 200 to 500 from Nikon. So, but they are slow lenses and they are not fast aperture glasses. They are like 4.5 to 6.3 or 5.6. They are not F4s. They are not 2.8. So, you, will, you won't get that subject separation using these lenses until unless you are shooting in a close proximity at 500mm at 5.6 or 600mm at 6.3 then you are able to get the separation but again it case by case not in the ideal condition not like what you see by pros or a national geography not like that so Again, when, the, when you know, there when there is a will, there's always a way. That's how I found my way by going manual focus lenses, and I am so much used to of manual focus now that it's just like you know, it's my muscle memory, and I I, I can achieve focus on anything, anytime I want. That's how I do. So I, I thought let me make a video about that and share with you so you will get the idea. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the future for some new content. Till then take care.